Good day, brothers and sisters. Another day to spend with the Lord. Come, let us listen and reflect on His Word. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in a vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord We are judged by our actions. The execution of a number of convicted criminals and delinquents has not doused the heated debate over the exercise of justice and the morality of imposing the death penalty. The laws have yet to reckon with the extenuating circumstances and complicities of a crime the possibilities of reform on the part of the guilty party, the right of a human being or the state to take the life of another which is believed to belong to God alone. Reference to God is rendered more acute because the Lord as we know Him in scriptures, especially in the Gospels, behaves as a judge who would drag the case indefinitely. He does not strike the guilty dead. He does not label anyone guilty once and for all. He believes in and waits for sincere amendment. The victims and those who suffer the brand of the offense find this strange and even call it unfair. But will not the Lord reply, Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? God is not indifferent to the good and evil done by human beings. But as long as they are capable of free choice, they are open to possibilities. The evil ones are not forever saddled by their guilt. But if a wicked man, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just. He shall surely live, he shall not die. The divine way is further clarified by Jesus in the gospel when he says that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before the so-called righteous. They are the embodiment of the son who initially says no to God but later regrets it and works for him. They heed the Baptist call for repentance and then receive Jesus teaching with joy. By the same token, this opening to possibilities is a warning to the just. It does not do any good to produce some certificate of good behavior in the past. The just must persevere in doing works of justice and remain humble. Moreover, they must not be too quick to judge the misconduct of others or hold them in contempt. All must be converted again and again. Otherwise, they end up behaving like a chief priest 
and elders of the people who think they do not need the baptism of repentance by John the Baptist because they have always behaved as true children of Abraham. The Baptist has already warned them about the insidious trap of self-righteousness and here Jesus tells them that even as the sinners enter the kingdom, they might just find themselves left out. They are the personification of the Son who readily says yes but never goes to the vineyard. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, goes a proverb. Today's word of God reminds us that it is our action that counts. If the Monchai writes, Entry into the kingdom requires of us a continuing and living desire to accept God's will for us at each moment of our life. It is a yes said over and over again.